The world does not stand still. The world goes forward, changing and being updated and returning often to the old ideas which were voiced hundreds of years ago. Helena Blavatsky thought that her works and knowledge which she has brought to the world will be understood by mankind maybe in a hundred years. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky was born in Yekaterinoslav, now Dnipro, Ukraine, on August 12th, according to the Gregorian, 1831. Some time has passed, and this woman remains in the memory of mankind as the great teacher, the thinker, the writer, the philosopher, the author of books, the secret doctrine, and the exposed Ezida. To understand the scale of the identity of Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, it is enough to remember people who respected her incredibly highly, talked about her as a great teacher, as a person who has deeply affected their life and creativity. Names such as Rabindranath Tagore and Mahatma Gandhi would be very happy to touch the edge of the dress of Madame Blavatsky. Names such as Scriabin, Maximilian Voloshin, Kandinsky, Andrei Belli, and many representatives of the Silver Age in our culture and our history. The beginning of the Silver Age is usually referred to as beginning in the 1890s. It is necessary to mention Albert Einstein. It is necessary to mention Edison, who, by the way, was a member of the Theosophical Society. And this is the important fact. If we think about the present time, the restoration of the Blavatsky home certainly leads us to the fact that we will fully realize and pay tribute to the name and heritage of our great compatriot. Helena Blavatsky published the first secret doctrines on which all religions are based. She made the first attempt to give a religious and philosophical synthesis of all centuries and nations. It has caused the awakening of religious consciousness of the ancient East and opened to the West the wisdom of the East. She logically proved the importance of morals and a brotherhood and embodied not the fantastic but concrete idealism penetrating into all areas of life. Helena Blavatsky's doctrine is unique. By and large, it is difficult to find in the history of culture and philosophy of a parallel to Helena Blavatsky. On the one hand, she revealed the depths of human knowledge, a spiritual, holistic view of the world known to the ancients. And on the other hand, she presented a modern world view, which synthesized, summarized, and united modern achievements of science and history. And all this has furnished a productive evolutionary level of knowledge for modern humanity. Moreover, Blavatsky's doctrine contains a number of predictions, not of fantastic plan, but predictions of scientific discoveries, the developments of science, which were confirmed during the 20th century. For example, in the secret doctrine, it is said about divisibility of atoms that they stay in constant motion. Scientists at the time of Blavatsky not only considered atoms indivisible, but also believed that they are not mobile. Blavatsky knew of the general mass-energy relationship developed later in 1905 by Einstein in his special theory of relativity, E equals mc squared. She knew that matter has wave properties. In the 20th century, Louis de Broglie began to disclose this idea in physics. Elena Petrovna создала uh, Helena Blavatsky created in some sense a powerful scientific theoretical basis for development of research in nearly all fields of knowledge which are now used by mankind. 
Her secret doctrine laid the prerequisites for a whole group of completely new areas of knowledge that are not yet available. For example, the temporal geometry, the geometry of multidimensional time, the direction associated with the use of torsion streams, or areas related to multidimensional interaction. The academic science so far on many questions described in Blavatsky's work is weak and cannot use this material or simply does not want to work with this stuff. That time is yet to come. The Academy has not developed a scientific method for verification of Blavatsky's knowledge. She dedicated her life to theosophy, the divine wisdom. She, together with Henry Steele Olcott and William Kwan Judge, formed the International Theosophical Society, the purpose and objectives of which was the creation of the universal brotherhood of humanity without distinction of race, creed, sex, caste, or color, and the study of ancient and modern religions philosophies, and sciences, the investigation of the unexplained laws of nature and the psychic powers latent in man. Theosophy is not itself the brainchild of Madame Blavatsky. This is an ancient doctrine rather than a phenomenon of Western culture. Theosophy arose in the depths of antiquity as the Neoplatonic philosophical school and runs through the whole history of European philosophy. This includes medieval German mysticism, Renaissance Neoplatonists, through the work of Swedenborg, Böhm, Paracelsus, and other famous names of the mystical philosophical traditions. And thanks to Helena Blavatsky, these teachings come from the common depths of history, rather than from elite circles of thinkers and have become the property of all mankind. Therefore, Helena Blavatsky's value is that she heralds from a certain esoteric tradition, from a transmission of devoted persons who bring particular ideas of mankind to the exoteric level. Therefore, these ideas are made available to all who are open to this knowledge. The materialistic way of thinking for a long time separated soul from a body and, dissecting the latter, tried in vain to explain the status quo. But there is a number of the modern scientists who, like Helena Blavatsky, view the world from positions of its wholeness. This means that everything is interrelated and we all penetrate each other. Reasoning from these positions, the emergence of each human being in a body on this planet is not random, nor is the place of its birth random. Sometimes people ask me why it is here, on the Dnipro River in Ekaterinoslav, Helena Blavatsky was born. I have a thought a lot on this subject, and I have my own version of the answer to this question. It seems to me that it is not accidental that Helena Blavatsky was born in tiny provincial Ekaterinoslav, and not merely on the bank of a great river, but the ancient Dnipro Rapids. The Dnipro Rapids have long been used to read the geological record of this earth. And not without reason, Helena Andreevna Han, her mother, with such delight and so beautifully, described the Dnipro Rapids in the story Utbala. Many have tried to decipher the mystery of the laws of time and place that govern the birth of great personalities, the embodiment of rare people with influential goals and objectives, occurs in precisely prescribed places and times. Perhaps the Dnipro Rapids, consisting of the world's oldest granite, aged 3.5 billion years, create a background that influences the surrounding space with subtle forces.
Мне кажется, она родилась. It seems to me that there is another reason she was born here, near the Dnipro bank. We have no complete answer yet. Maybe we'll never. But a sign which we do have is quite actual and notable. It can be seen in the first hall of the historical museum. It is called Kurnotsovsky Idol, and probably a little bit reveals the secret. Apparently random coincidence in symbols can speak about some other, bigger patterns, which we cannot explain yet. The Kurnotsovsky Idol was found in the village of Kurnotskova, several kilometers from the estate of Helena's father, in the village of Shandrovka of Yuryevsky district of Dnipropetrovsk region. The well-known Kurnosovsky idol is entered in all archaeological catalogs of the world. The Kurnosovsky idol is known as an image of the ancient Aryan god Indra, or according to another version, Vishnu. Consolidation of the Western and Eastern teachings is another merit of Helena Blavatsky. Eastern philosophy in Europe became known only to the 19th century. Partly, it is reflected in Schellinger and Schopenhauer's creativity. The Upanishads and other philosophical texts are available through theosophy and open to study, thanks to Helena Blavatsky. And the globalism of today, which we experience, allows us to find valuable and vital ideals through a synthesis of an Eastern and Western outlook represented in theosophy. The history of creation of the Museum Center of Helena Blavatsky and her family in the homeland of her birth in Dnipro goes to the middle of the 1980s, when in the course of scientific history research, her grandfather's estate of Andrei Vadaev was found and the only surviving house in the area. At the same time, the initiative group was established to create the Museum Center. Scientists, local historians, and representatives of public organizations united around this idea. Their long and laborious work has led to certain results. In 1991, the delegation from the International Theosophical Society arrived to Dnipro. There were the President, Rada Bernier, and the President of the European Federation, Mr. Kurt Berg. They came here for a very significant conference and to take part in an unveiling ceremony of the plaque on Helena Blavatsky's house. At the time of the Soviet Union, the unveiling of a plaque in memory of HPB was impossible. And only in 1991, when there were changes in our country, the plaque in memory of Helena Blavatsky was unveiled here on the house. Uh, 1991 was a jubilee year dedicated to the 160th anniversary of the birth of Helena Blavatsky. Delegations and guests from many countries, India, Austria, Germany, Russia, Bulgaria, and others, took part in the celebrations. It was a visionary and powerful action, which included the conference Blavatsky and the Present, as well as exhibitions and readings in educational institutions of the city devoted to Helena Blavatsky. These events of 1991 supported the subsequent arrival of Kurt Berg, who gave an impulse to further understanding and the creation of the Museum Scientific Center and attracted people to Theosophy. When the house was transferred to fixed assets of the historical museum, it was in a terrible state. But thanks to friends and volunteers who gathered around the house since the 1990s, we have replenished the collection. 
Various events are held at the museum center. Scientific conferences, scientific occupations, round tables, club occupations. Thanks to volunteers and friends, the water supply and power supply was restored, the roof has been repaired, and many other repair work has been performed. This movement resulted in decades of volunteerism. The volunteers have worked for 26 consecutive years. In August, people from different cities of Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, and Western Europe come to us. They come and support through their work and restore this house. There is a lot of work to be carried out by the Dnipro architectural historians and the Kiev specialists of Ukwer Porekt Restoration Institute also put in the building over 100 small drillings into the building structure to diagnose its state. Thanks to this work, the original appearance of the building was fully restored. Vintage door and window openings, stove spaces, stucco moldings were found. The internal and filade system of halls and rooms became clear. Subsequent research revealed the historical boundaries of the large Ekaterinoslav estate of Blavatsky's grandparents, as well as the scientific and aesthetic value of the wonderful garden of flowers and fruit trees created by them. Andrei Fadeyev and his wife Elena Pavlovna were famous naturalists, and Andrei Fadeyev was one of the founders of the Ekaterinoslav Pomological Society, which was engaged in cultivation of fruit trees. Elena Pavlovna was a famous botanist, and her incredible research was devoted to flowers and plants. She left behind a huge legacy. All family of Helena Blavatsky can be compared to gardeners sowing fine seeds in souls of people, namely beauty and knowledge. It was this close-knit family with the humanistic traditions and extremely soft attitude towards people. Elena Andreevna Han, Blavatsky's mother, the first Ekaterinoslav and one of the first domestic female writers, was the author of 11 stories and entered the history of Russian literature as an unusual phenomenon of the first half of the 19th century. Unfortunately, her life was too short. She died at age 28, leaving three children, Helena, Vera, and Leonid. Her father was Pyotr Alexeyevich Han. Like her mother, he was a representative of an old aristocratic family. After the death of his wife, he was the main support of the daughter, an understanding friend until the end of his life. The estate of the grandparents of HPB represented an absolutely beautiful, unique garden of flowers and fruit trees. In this garden, HBB made her first steps, and she saw it throughout her early childhood. And I think the image of this wonderful garden lived in her heart throughout life. Then many years passed, and when she looked for a place for the location of the Theosophical Society, she found it in the south of India. And together with her friends, they were able to buy a small estate, which became the location of the headquarters of the International Theosophical Society from that time until today. Helena Blavatsky had phenomenal abilities, huge diligence, courage, and tenacity. Traveling all over the world for many years, she investigated the spiritual heritage of mankind by collecting and accumulating knowledge. She visited Egypt, Greece, China, Japan, America, Peru, Tibet, and other countries. In India and Tibet, Helena Blavatsky had access to ancient ashrams and monasteries, and acquired the unique right to transfer to contemporaries and descendants a part of the knowledge kept there. Almost lost in the so-called civilized world, this was the most important knowledge of cosmos and man. 
which was then laid down in the book The Secret Doctrine in two parts, Cosmogenesis and Anthropogenesis. В принципе, древние произведения архитектуры Ancient works of architecture, including Egyptian pyramids, temples of Greece, construction in Mesoamerica, Machu Picchu, Mahendro Daro, and others, are now massively replicated in various books and popularized in movies. But rarely do these works tell what mysteries of cosmogenesis stand behind the emergence of these forms. It appears, as Blavatsky pointed out in The Secret Doctrine, that ancient architects were members of mysteriological schools of knowledge. They put this knowledge in masterpieces of ancient architecture, in the form of special systems of proportions, special systems of ratios between various elements of buildings, and much else. But still, the principles of such things remain, which was of late forgotten, and used only for that astroplanetary cycle, accepted for that time only. The universe and mankind went on the way of immersion into a dense physical world, the process of decompression from a body and the return to more subtle sensations starts now. The principle of architecture will appear again as it is applicable to new conditions and opportunities. According to the ancient supernal knowledge, Blavatsky's doctrine, theosophy, laws of the subtle world create completely new things in various spheres of human activity, in art, science, and architecture. We are architects who tried to interpret what was stated by Blavatsky in The Secret Doctrine, and we set for ourselves the task of interpreting what she visualized in the field of architecture and urban planning in relation to our modern era. According to this concept, the Earth and the universe interact via invisible patterns and relationships built throughout space in a system of various matrices. All the universe is penetrated by an astral framework projecting itself on the Earth. Each type of matrix has its own hierarchy, quality, speed, communication with time and with form. So, as we understand, for the modern building to correspond to the new era, its form should be correctly integrated into these frameworks. These spiritual matrices must be aligned from the very highest, most abstract ideas to the most gross material form. In other words, buildings must harmoniously integrate with the cosmic and Earth's energy flows. Harmony is the key word here. It is present everywhere, especially in music. Blavatsky also said in her books about music that it is a powerful tool for human exposure, connecting it with divine emanations, with the beauty of the highest worlds. How do we see communication in music? How is music connected with H.P. Blavatsky's doctrines? Well, first of all, she saw music through specific sound and the influence of sound on the human nervous system. We can trace the quality in music. Why does music with repetitive bass, or as we say, steel rock music, often annoy us? Why does it badly affect a person? Why did we find rest under Mozart's music? 
Anyone who's engaged in therapy unfortunately approaches music very specifically. For instance, he uses Mozart. Is anyone affected by him? Okay, but what exactly is affected? After all, it is necessary to understand how instruments affect a person. And therefore it is necessary to study the structure of sound, sound combinations, harmony, harmonic sequence, together with the dynamic plan that influences a person. It is important not only to have correct technical execution, but also purity in the artist's soul through whom music sounds. It is important for the musician to be soulful. After all, the impact of the music and the sound happens instantly, and it literally can work wonders before our eyes, changing us. We we observe the reaction of the audience during the concert. The brighter the concert and the better the performance, the deeper perform the work, the more it affects people. We see how they change. What is significant is that the changes are taking place in the collective listening experience. All this is anticipated in Blavatsky's works. Everything she taught and drew attention to during creation of the Theosophical Societies is very relevant today. The impetus and direction of the society which is now being created in Ukraine is from below, not from above. And this was the method Madame Blavatsky implemented in practice. Why is it so difficult to understand Blavatsky's teachings? On the one hand, the difficulty of understanding the teaching is related to its depth capacity, inclusiveness, and huge amounts of information. On the other hand, there are critical points of vision. The French philosopher René Guignon investigated Blavatsky's doctrine and the sources that she used, but he questioned some of the ideas which she put forward. Nikolai Perdaev turned to the concept of theosophy, but offered a reading of theosophy from the Orthodox Christian perspective. Therefore, Berdaev did not perceive unambiguously the theosophy of Madame Blavatsky, who tried to unite all religious views and world religions. We also remember Sevalot Soloviev, who was a member of the Theosophical Society and was very familiar with the publications in The Theosophist. This magazine began publication during the life of HPB and continues to this day. His critical point of vision has become a kind of polemical context which both philosophers and theosophists appeal to, exploring the sources of this criticism which often are hidden in some egocentric or even authoritarian origins of the unrealized thinker. These alternate positions should be taken into consideration, comprehending Blavatsky's doctrine from positions of scientific research, because polar points of view promote a critical picture. It is necessary to stress that the trend toward scientific understanding of theosophy and HBB's doctrines is strong. Therefore, in the depths of the Theosophical Society, and in particular of the Theosophical Society in Ukraine, which is quite new, the science team was created. This team unites theosophists and scientists open to this knowledge and to a new scientific paradigm. These people try to understand the doctrine and Blavatsky's heritage. First of all, as our compatriot who gained fame and won respect in a number of the countries around the world. It seems to me, scientific research of HBB is currently at a peak. At the end of 2010, Theosophists of Dnipro went to the headquarters of the World Theosophical Society, located at Adyar in India. 
they plunged into the huge array of information which is stored in the Adyar Library collection. They sequentially and laboriously began to collect primary sources, materials, and the manuscripts most directly related to Blavatsky's heritage and to the history of the Theosophical movement. In the convention opening day, a Ukraine tree planting ceremony was held. The Bodhi tree sapling, which is considered the tree of Buddha, had been selected. And now the roots of the tree derive their strength from the origins of ancient wisdom of mankind, and its branches and leaves symbolize the spiritual revival of our nation. Today we dream of creating in Dnipro the scientific center which will be located in a fine garden and will tell of the family, heritage and destiny of Helena Blavatsky. The laboratories and large scientific library will be there. Scientific researchers will arrive from around the world and will study Blavatsky's heritage. A center of scientific and cultural tourism will arise there. It will be a multi-pronged project and program. It is necessary to plan the creation of the museum center in Dnipro strictly in this format and with this understanding. The museum center, shining a light upon the past, recreating history, will also be directed toward the future in the creative fullness of each new day. This center should bear knowledge and great wisdom which theosophy and ancient manuscripts describe. Today the manuscripts can be read and give insight into the wisdom that is hidden in them. This wisdom is boundless because it opens up for us cosmogenesis or the origin or evolution of the universe, and opens anthropogenesis, which is the evolution or genesis of the human race. And one begins to realize through this knowledge their unity, the inseparable energy, the spiritual connection with this wonderful world that we see around. The museum center, which is located near the downtown Dnipro coast, will become a decoration of the estate garden. Like a big and beautiful, powerful tree with many branches, it is a symbol of the tree of life, uniting the museum, scientific center, and like-minded people all over the world. Speaking of unity and the desire for unity, today we see in the world an aspiration for different theosophical and other organizations to unite, and one of the unifying principles is the house where Helena Petrovna Blavatsky was born. At this time, nowhere in the world is there a museum of Madame Blavatsky, and the existence of this house in which Helena Blavatsky was born obliges us not just to create the museum center, but to create a certain seed crystal, a unification which will not be only a geographical core, but also a spiritual center of mankind.